ഹിമിനീ <laughs> ഹ <laughs> ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ഇസ് and the believers men and women are awliya of one another hazrat maulana muhammad ali has translated that as friends but it can also be uh, translated as uh, helpers supporters protectors etc they enjoy in good and forbid evil and keep up prayer and pay the poor rate and obey allah and his messenger as for these allah will have mercy on them surely allah is mighty wise i have recited these verses of the uh, or this verse of the holy quran because uh, of uh, what we've seen in the media on television and newspapers about the behavior and culture in the parliament in london and their appalling examples have been uh, 
given and some MPs are being uh, investigated for this. Appalling examples of sexual harassment and, to put it mildly, inappropriate behavior. Now, you see, when Islam suggests that uh, men and women who are uh, uh, non mahrams should not um, have long meetings, close associations in private, then people object to that, and uh, especially men who say, well, does it mean that all men are bad? All men are going to sexually harass women and attack, attack them and so on? Why does Islam say that men and women who are allowed to marry each other should not be closeted together? Uh, uh, in, in, in uh, private rooms and private meetings, etc. You see, th this is like saying, you know, there is a law which says that uh, shoplifters will be prosecuted. And in some shops, when you go there, you see this advertised. You know, there's a notice there. We always prosecute shoplifters. And if a person goes into that shop and he's not a shoplifter, the argument that is used in this context about Islamic teaching that, you know, uh, men and women shouldn't mingle together in this way, the same argument could be used. Well, I'm not a shoplifter. Why have you put that notice up? I'm not a shoplifter. Why has the British government passed a law that says shoplifters can be prosecuted, brought before magistrates, fined, sent to prison, and so on. What people forget is that the law and rules are not about individuals and not about people. The law and rules are there to regulate a situation. You have a shop, you have open shelves with goods on them. Now a situation may arise that someone picks up something, puts it in their pocket and leaves the shop without paying. The law is not concerned with who that person is. The law is concerned with what is happening, what the situation is. And it is the same with Islam and uh, in this uh, 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 requirement that men and women, women shouldn't privately mingle together uh, in such a way that it may give rise to uh, um, suspicion or allegations, etc. So if you take that into account, then this law is as much about protecting women as it is about protecting men. You're closeted together with someone, you know, your secretary or etc. And then she does something wrong and you sack her or, uh, you know, give her a warning or whatever. And she starts to make allegations against you. That you made, you know, advances towards her and this and that. And, you know, uh, your conversation with her was inappropriate, etc. How will you defend yourself? There's only the two of you. So the law is about this. This rule is about protecting both men and women. And I find it very interesting that a senior American politician, I think he's the vice president now or the previous vice president, I can't remember, he made a statement on television. And there was a lot of 
comment on that. It's, uh, you know, why did he say this? And etc. What he said was that uh, if he's going to have a long meeting with a woman who's not his wife, he always makes sure that his wife is there. Why? Isn't he applying this Islamic rule? Islamic rule is there to stop the um, acrimony in society, in the institution that will take place if uh, the man does something wrong or he doesn't do something wrong and he is falsely accused of uh, doing that. As I said, Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Ali Sahib Rahmatullah has translated that as friends. But it can equally mean supporters, guardians. For example, uh, <clears throat> Um, in uh, chapter 2, verse 257, the uh, Holy Quran says, Allahu wali, wali yulazina amanu. Those who believe, God is their wali. God is their helper. God is their friend. God is their protector. Inna wali yallahu. Chapter 7, verse 196. My wali, my protector, my friend is Allah. Wallahu waliyul mu'mineen, chapter 3, verse 68. God is the one who straightens out all difficulties for the believers. So here you can take that, summarize that to mean uh, he's a helper, he's a supporter, uh, and uh, uh, so on. And in fact, it, it, it means that you're so close to something that there's nothing in between. And it applies in all circumstances and situations. For example, if you're talking about uh, a man's station in life, you could say that the, a captain or a major is a captain's wealth. Because there is no other grade in between them. And uh, <clears throat> it could be because of your um, family. It could be because of uh, uh, your religion. And it can be because of your support and because of your friendship. When God says that men and women are each other's friends, what it means is that they help each other and they support each other, regardless of whatever their relationship is. Because the general words, men and women, are used here to describe their uh, relationship. So it's the duty of every man to protect every woman. Your or her religion doesn't come into it, her sect doesn't come into it. And in the same way, it's the duty of every woman to support and help a man. You know, if a woman is driving and, and, and she sees someone standing by the roadside and it's cold and it's raining and his car is broken down, The general reaction would be, especially if it's dark and at night and so on, the general reaction would be that that uh, lady will not stop. In fact, these days, a man will not stop either. Because he, he, he will think, well, I don't know what she's going to do and say if I stop and offer help. And that is the sad thing. It's got to a point where um, if you're on the uh, underground 
and you offer a woman your seat, the look in their eyes is immediately, what's his ulterior motive? Why is he offering me his seat? What does he want? This is on a crowded train. I mean, for a few years now, um, this doesn't happen to me because I get on a train and uh, pregnant women stand up and say, would you like to sit down? Well, that's one advantage of being old that uh, this sort of thing uh, doesn't happen. But I think it's very sad. And it is, it has come about because we have abandoned as a society, we have abandoned the fact that men and women are individual entities in their own right. And their relationship should be as the Holy Quran says, that they should be each other's guardians, they should be each other's helpers, they should be uh, each other's protectors, regardless. And one way in which they can do this is mentioned by the Quran. Men and women, they are each other's wali. What do they do? They enjoin good and forbid evil. So, if a member of parliament is doing something wrong or has done, thing, done something wrong, his secretary should be supporting and helping him by telling him that he's done the wrong thing. But uh, I find it both sad and amusing that the institution that is supposed to be the guardian of women's rights and their honour, the members of that institution are accused of this kind of behaviour. Some years ago, and I gave a khutbah on this, there was a, I think, charity dinner or something given for uh, what is called the great and the good. I don't know what was great about them or what was good about them. And there were accusations that uh, 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 inappropriately dressed waitresses were required to serve food at that dinner and um, men uh, um, were behaving inappropriately towards them. And when one of them objected, she was ejected from the dinner and she then brought it to the attention of the newspapers and so on. And that is the sad thing, that these things carry on unless they, they come to the attention of the news media or the social media. Those great, so-called great and the good, they didn't regard their own behavior as being despicable. But their concern was that the news had hit the, uh, the, 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 the newspapers and television and so on. So what is going to happen to my reputation? Well, if you didn't do the wrong thing, nothing will happen to your reputation. And that is the difficulty and that is the point that people always miss. And the Quran mentions this, they enjoin good and forbid evil. They don't say don't do this because people will find out, it will get on the television and so on. They say in principle, this is the right thing to do and that is the wrong thing to do. Do the right thing, don't do the wrong thing. But unfortunately, the way the society is going, people generally are not concerned with what is the right thing and uh, what is the wrong thing. Their only concern is, if I do this, will others find out? And unless and until we move out of that mindset, nothing will change. 
nothing will change. And that is sad. And a lot of fuss has been made that, you know, investigations are going to take place. Well, these investigations, they take years. And what is the purpose? Being cynical, I would say, what the purpose of these investigations is to drag them out. So by the time there is a, a report, this is old news. Oh, this happened three years ago. We moved on. Russia has attacked another country or America has attacked another country and we are dealing with that. So forget about that. That happened years ago. And so the circle carries on. And uh, as I always say, these rules given in the Holy Quran, the principles that they enunciate, are for everyone, regardless of whether you are a Muslim or not a Muslim. So I would urge the parliamentarians to take heed of this instruction of the Holy Quran. That God has made all men as helpers and protectors and friends of women, regardless of whether they are related or not. And God has created all women to be helpers and protectors and supporters of men, regardless of whether they are related or not. But in doing so, you do it in a way that does not bring either party's reputation into question. Let us hope that our parliament and parliamentarians will take heed and turn to these principles so that each gender can contribute fully to uh, the benefit of the society. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafana wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim inna hu ta'ala jawadun Kareemun Malikun Barroon for Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmdohu, and Astainu, and Astaghfiru, and Nomino Behi, and Atabakalu, and Lehi, and Alzubillah, him in Shururi and Fusina, and in Sayyati, Avalina, may Yahti Hilla, who fell a mudilla lahu, and may you the lil who fell a hadiella. I shall do Muhammadan. Abduhu wa Rasul. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama sallata ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم واخصل من خزل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالأدل والإسان وإتعز القربى وينها Anil Fakshai will bunker will bug ye Yahizukum lala kum tazakarun Ulkurula hayas kurkum, what who yes tajibla kum malazikurula hiakber. Walla who yahala muma tasnaun.
അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ അലഹദുലിമീൻ <coughs> 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 ഫീദി <laughs> അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ അലഹമുല്ലാഹിബിലമീൻ ഹിംസ്തീനിയും <laughs> ഹമ്മാലത്തൽഹത്തബ് അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ അല്ലാഹു അക്ബർ
Thank you for joining us for our Friday prayer. This is the last Friday of uh, Ramadan 2022. And I hope that we will not forget the lessons that uh, we learned during this Ramadan or the improvements that we might have made in our character. So that uh, in Ramadan 2022, we further improve our spiritual and our physical condition. And I hope you will continue to pray in each prayer for the whole of humanity without worrying about people's religion and their nationality and their caste and their creed and so on. And I hope you will pray for me as well, that God give me strength to carry on serving the Lahore Ahmadiyya movement as long as I can. With that, I take my leave of you. Assalamu alaikum, khuda hafiz and goodbye.